so, hey folks, how are you doing? I know I've been promising videos, so finally, here it is. And I'm going to get you started today on Pilates Fundamentals. So I've made some videos that are great for beginners, um, pre and postnatal video, and then some of my original course sequences. But there are still some things in there that are a little too difficult for some people because we need to build a better foundation and other small minute movements first then we increase the lever or the distance of our arms and legs, that sort of thing. So today's video is really great if you have absolutely no idea about true Pilates method, the breath, how to connect, and how to find those stabilizing muscles and those muscles that help to build that strong foundation of the body and especially the core and floor connection that is always trying to protect and help our body move. Even when you reach for that can of soup, up in your cabinet, your pelvic floor and core is already responding. We want to make sure it's responding correctly and that you're not going to be one of those people that even if you're really strong and can lift 300 pounds, you go to bend over and pick up a pencil and now you've pulled your back. So we're going to move things back a little bit and really work on these fundamental foundations first. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to do is start with your breath. I'm going to pull my hair up here. And the breath is not simple, okay, unfortunately. It's usually the part that gets people the most. So watch Pilates, basic terms um, and language than my other video and practice more with this. But what you want to think about here is with your inhale, think of uh, ribs. And as you inhale, those ribs open. And as you exhale, those ribs slide shut. I also like to envision the umbrella as the bottom of my rib cage. Inhale. And as you exhale, those ribs slide shut. The other thing you want to think about, and we're going to go to a lying down position, is to make sure that the transverse abdominus is activating as it should. So as you come down onto the floor and we inhale, a lot of people push into the rib cage like they're trying to touch the ceiling. And as you exhale, you settle back and down. Instead, what I'd like you to think about is pushing those ribs in the back towards the floor like you're trying to push your mat down and as you do that put your fingers right inside those bony hip crests it should be kind of soft while you inhale because your ribs are doing more of the work and then as you exhale you should feel the tightening of those muscles under your hip crest that's your transverse abdominus so inhale and as you exhale think of the ribs gliding shut inhale they glide open exhale they glide shut. Now let's talk a little bit more about what we call that imprint, the activation of the transverse abdominal So stick those fingers there again, so inhale, press, inhale, fill up, press into the mat, exhale. Imagine as if, keep breathing, that as you exhale, those hip crests could move together like a slow glacier. You can't really move, but you should feel that activation as the belly button tracks in and up and the transverse tightens into that corset. Inhale, and exhale. Now one more time, and this time I want you to think about, especially since you're lying down, that there are eggs under your heels and your gluteals are relaxed because as you take this inhale, I want you to imagine that even the space between your sit bones is opening up and relaxing. And then as you exhale, and that transverse pulls in and up like a zipping of the winter coat, you're also pulling your six bones in and up together just by the muscular contraction there of the pelvic floor and a lifting of the pelvic floor like it's trying to reach towards the belly button. Inhale. This does not involve the glutes yet. Exhale. That's called imprint. Imagine you're hugging your spine with your core muscles. Inhale. Fill up like a balloon. Exhale. Pulling in and up, hugging the spine from the tailbone all the way up. Now, let's go on to the next exercise, the pelvic bowl. This one is so small, so don't make it bigger than it is. You're gonna inhale, feel for the small of your back. You should feel that little cave right around your pants line in the back. As you exhale, during this flexion, you're gonna lift the tailbone by pulling these core muscles nice and tight. And then inhale, extend. Feel that space in the lower back again. And you can even go a little bit further, creating a slight arch here. Exhale, so we're going to kind of get into this rocking motion, and as we do, 
we're going to start to feel our neutral bone and other exercises when we realize the difference between a kind of ex a hyperextended um, extension and then deep flexion. So this is neutral. Good. Now the pelvic bowl, we start to rock the bones a little bit. So you're going to inhale, exhale, tuck, lift up through one hip crest, roll down, around and through, lift the other hip crest, and settle back into that neutral, that slight cave at the waistband in the back. Inhale again, and on your exhale, start with that tight zipper, roll up through one hip crest, Roll it around, other hip crest gets a little higher, and back to neutral, settle in. Inhale, exhale, pull up through that zipper. You'll feel that space in the back disappear. This time, start with the other hip up first. And rock the boat right around and through. Now, as you do this, keep your eggs under your heels. We want as little gluteal activation here as possible. Settle in neutral, inhale, give me another one on this side. Exhale, start with your zipper, tailbone comes up, lift up through one hip bone, you'll get this extension, then the other hip bone, and you'll finish off here, and then give your big inhale, settle back in neutral. So that's the pelvic bowl, you can do about six to eight of those total, but there's one to get you started. Now knee sway is next, bring your feet together, and then link your feet a little bit closer underneath of your knee line, so instead of being way up here. Bring this length in so that we can get the most out of this. Now, what you're going to do is glue those knees together. Put an imaginary quarter between your knees. And as you inhale, you're going to sway the knees. Now, as you do, those hip crests are very important. Don't rock the boat. And exhale back to center. Inhale. Keep control of the ribs. So think of a string of pearls between that rib cage connection there under your sternum. We're not going to bust our pearls. You're going to push into the mat instead with your breath. Inhale, exhale. And your knees are going to separate on this one a little bit, and that's okay. Exhale, back to center. And make sure you have the length of the back of your neck. So if your chin feels like it's pointing towards the ceiling, settle it back in and down. Put that imaginary orange between your chin and your chest. Inhale, keep from rocking the boat. And exhale, back to center. Now, we do something called single leg reach in our beginner's classes, but we can back it up even more. So something that we call like a knee fold, or hip fold, I like to say, because it's more at the hip. So a single leg reach, what I want you to think of, if I tell you to float your foot up off the floor, instead of pushing off the floor, I want you to think instead of this connection between the rib cage and the hip. So think of two bungee cords being on either side here, and that transverse abdominal should corset muscles. As you inhale, push the mat down with your breath, and then exhale, pulling the belly in and up and tightening those bungee cords to float one leg up. We're gonna stay on this leg for six. You're gonna inhale, now keep your belt on, so don't press into the belly button, filling up the belly button with your breath. Exhale, that belly button should travel in and up. I like to put my hands sometimes over my belly button, making a diamond shape. Exhale, feel that diamond sink in and up, more under the ribs, inhale, Feel the breath move and glide under the diamond, but not pressing into the diamond. Exhale, which means you're gonna to have to fill up that pelvic floor. Release the pressure through the sits bones. Let that breath fill your body. Exhale, draw it in and up. And let's do one more time. Inhale, and exhale, drawing in and up. Now let's go ahead and do the other side. So keep your diamond. Feel for that small of your back still, that small cave. You're gonna inhale here. And on your exhale, drawing the core in and up. Inhale. Now notice the angle of my knee doesn't change. Exhale. The movement is in the extension of the hip on your inhale. And on the exhale, you're gonna decrease that angle. Three more, inhale. You have eggs under your support heel. So we're not squeezing the gluteus. We're True core four activation here. One more. I fit. I think we still have one more, don't we? Inhale. I'm talking to you like you can answer me. Exhale. Good. Okay. And let's go ahead and switch legs again. So we're going to come to what's called a knee sway. Now this is the precursor to leg circles in math class. But first we have to make sure we can really get this movement of the leg in the hip socket. So keep your support leg bent. Your eggs are under your heel. Your glutes are soft. 
You're gonna exhale up to this tabletop position. Now, keep a nice flat shin. Your knee circles. That shin should stay parallel to the ceiling, so we don't want to see this flopping around foot. We want to think of there being a bowl of soup on your knee, and I want you to travel around in a circle. Exhale as the leg bone draws closer to you. Inhale as it draws away. Exhale, still thinking of that diamond. Inhale, exhale. One more. You can even switch directions on this. Now you might find with those different muscular attachments in your hip fold that one might click and pop more than the other. If you're getting clicking and popping, I strongly encourage you to make your movement smaller. Okay, we want to work within your range of motion. And as we start to what I call fine tune the guitar strings, then we can start to increase the range of motion. But that clicking and popping is your body's way of saying, hold on, Let's work on this string first before we go to the next string. Now lower that foot down, take your inhale, feel for that filling of the body all the way to the pelvic floor, and then exhale, drawing in and up. Small circles this way now, keeping that shin flat and parallel to the ceiling. You're gonna exhale to move closer, inhale to move away. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. We have one more. And then reverse direction. Exhale. Inhale. I just said that in reverse. I'm sorry. Exhale as you draw in. We have three more. Keeping your eggs under your support leg. Watching for that movement of your breath. Inhale. Exhale. And float that foot down. Very good. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pause this video here because my camera only lets me make videos that are so long. So this will be part A. I'll go ahead and video part B and C. We'll keep moving and that way you can play with the different ones too that you would like to play with um, that you need to strengthen specifically. So we'll pause here. You can do this one again two or three times if you need the practice or leave it alone and go to part B and part C to complete your workout. All right, see you in just a sec.